Hello, and welcome to the Two Ball Brothers and a Microphone podcast. This is Danny Ryan. I'm sitting here with Tommy Ryan. How are you doing, Tommy? I'm doing well. Good morning, and happy day after 4th of July. Yes, yes. It was fun last night, spending time in Marietta, watching the fireworks go off. It's always a good show. Yeah, and a good show with the the Unitard, too. That was... uh... (laughs) (laughs) What Tommy is referring to is I got a bit of a a silly uh, one-piece... Proud to be an American uh, outfit that had a flag for shorts and uh, bow tie, a bow tie and yeah, it looked pretty ridiculous. I went out with uh, Kaylee on our date night, and we saw that at at uh, Target, and we had mm. to pick it up. So, so that's what we ended up doing. So, what's the uh, the the Tesla Model Three tip of the week? Well, one of the favorite things I like about the car is when you come to a stop and um, open up the car that it actually mutes the the music brings it down a notch nice. so for those that like to listen to it a little bit louder <laughs> it's, it's very convenient to so when uh, you're, you're blasting your Def Leppard it, it, it turn, turns it down a little that's right <laughs> <laughs> and then when you get back in it turns it, it, it back turns up it back up nice very nice and then later on today we're uh, we're spending some time in your garden so Ryan, yeah, Ryan. The uh, yeah. my my version of the Ryan family is coming over and look forward to spending some time over some there. Gardening one hundred and one. Yes, cool. the girls will love to do that. That sounds like a lot of fun. So, what we um, wanted to talk about was we have been reading the Hit Refresh book from Satya Nadella, and um, we're chapter wise, we're more than halfway through. Um, but book wise, if you look at it, we're, we've just finished up, up to about a page 120. If I look at the book, it's about, looks about halfway there. Um, and so wanted to maybe hit some of the highlights from reading the book and, uh, talk through some of the, um, internal conversations, maybe some of the highlights from the internal conversations that we've been having. Um, but, uh, you go through that, I guess for, uh, to let people know, um, we have uh, been meeting up every Tuesday at lunch and getting together to discuss one of the chapters from this, this book. And um, the book itself, it starts off with an introduction from Bill Gates. And um, it ha- also has a neat uh, picture. I can remember the day, you know, when he took over the reins from, from Microsoft. And it's the picture from... February 4th, 2014, when he was introduced as Microsoft's third CEO alongside Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer. Now, this was a big, um, what did this mean to you? I mean, when you heard this news and as um, uh, you heard that Satya was going to take over and, uh, you know, I guess initially what was the, the response? And uh, I can show you what, some of the things that came into my mind. But what, when this happened, what did you think about it? Um Overall, I thought it was good. I I thought um, there's a little bit of a swinging of the pendulum in terms of the style of the leadership. Uh Um, You know, early on, he seemed to be a a genuine, um, empathetic leader. Um, A lot of the book kind of gets into that. And um, it's, it's, it's just neat to see how much he cares and at the level that he's at in an organization that size, um, it could easily get pretty sterile mm-hmm. as a as a leader and and just a lot of pressure um, to make sure you keep the legacy going there. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's done such a wonderful job. Now I didn't know him before that. I really wasn't that deep into knowing the different levels of leadership at Microsoft and knowing that he was. In the running, except for when they started publicizing that. And um, out of the ones that they had to choose from, I'm glad they chose him. Anyone but Kevin Turner? <laughs> <laughs> no, he just, he's got a different style. And, and Yeah, it's, it's, it, it would be more very, the same. Yeah. It would be more the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When I look at the picture, I was thinking, you know, thank goodness it's not another, you know, white guy. <laughs> that, that, you know, that, that it's a multicultural yeah. company that... Sure, it, re- it, it really should to reflect that. the reflect the the company itself, and it was um, I think it was a good move on their their point. Um, you know, he was he had a long time within Microsoft, but uh, I just think um, I, I think they also wanted to get back to when it was originally announced. 
he's got a you know a bit of an engineering background, which I right. I felt like they had gotten a bit away from. It was more right more like their, Bill, yeah, you know, yeah, more the, of like the you know you wanted to rally around the 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 geeks wanted to rally around the geeks, and so putting him back into charge. Um, and as much as um, Steve Ballmer had done a awesome job getting into the Enterprise, and it's a top very difficult thing what he was able to pull off. I think this is where, really where he him coming in was was a, a reaffirmment of the the original Microsoft that yeah. I think a lot of people had fallen in love with 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 Bill Gates and the original story so yeah he he kind of coins it as you know finding the soul of yes. Microsoft yep so I'll go ahead and get us uh, running into this I mean the first chapter is basically the uh, the background on his story and and this is for folks who don't know I mean we've um, when we go through this book uh, together as a team I sort of walk through each of the different um, chapters and try to pull out some of the things that I saw um, and wanted to discuss with the group. The first thing he mentions is, you know, not long into um, when he started off as a CEO, he had this meeting called the Senior um, senior Leadership Team, uh, pulling together a diverse group of people. Um, and, uh, you know, some of his experience that he had, and he mentions a lot of the people who are in that group, a very um, you know, prominent and important group of folks within Microsoft that represent the overall um, leadership team. It was good to see Scott Guthrie, the Red Polo. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. as part of the group. and The Tiger Woods um, of uh, Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, he mentioned uh, you know, getting together as a group and some of his first experiences and... Um, how like the group knew everything a lot about their business background but not very much personal not very much about each other and um there he had an exercise with uh, brought in a doctor um you know and and sort of he asked a question you know and asked a question uh, uh, to challenge the group and nobody jumped into it and, and it was sort of telling that um you know nobody wanted to that that risk of failure was a part of this group and um and uh so it was interesting to see sort of him try to understand the the group and the 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 wanting to understand their personal passions and philosophies to not leave that half of their life at home and bring that with them yeah yeah i like that um you know it kind of speaks to when we think about work-life balance and mm -hmm. kind of the um kind of integrated that, um, you know, we, we want to bring our personal values into the work that we do and not have to switch into being a different person yeah. when we come to work. Absolutely. And, um, you know, as he said, it was, you know, for the first time, you know, he's looking around the room, he could even, he even saw a few teary eyes of so some people connecting on a, an emotional level, um, which I think this gets to, you know, his sort of heart and number that he said, I told them that we spent far too much time at work for not to have deep meaning. If we can connect what we stand for as in individuals with what the company is capable of, there's a very little we can't accomplish. Um, yeah, that's so important. And it's, it's awesome to see at the level or scale of a Microsoft. I mm -hmm. think, um, that's typically what you find in smaller companies. I think it's easier to connect with that and, and create a culture of we're here for a greater purpose and there's too many hours spent at work to feel like you're just punching the clock. And, um, you know, to re-energize that to say, this is more than a job. You know, this is something that um, we bring our full self and we're excited about the mission of what we're trying to do um that, that that's hard to pull off and and it's um it's interesting to see how he does it at the at level of a microsoft he says ideas excite me empathy grounds and centers me this was one of the favorite stories that i've read so far it's the one about you know, ironically, it was a lack of empathy that nearly cost me the chance to join Microsoft. It's the story about where when he was being interviewed and he's, um, he, get, he gets asked, imagine you see a baby lying in the street. The baby is crying. What do you do? And he responds without more forethought, very much uh, forethought. He says, you call 911. 
<laughs> what an engineering <laughs> response. Um, guy responds, you need some empathy, man. If a baby is lying mm. on the street crying, you pick up the baby. Um, so it's just interesting to hear that. And then he starts to pull into, um, you know, his first son, uh, Zane, and how that changed him and changed his family with having a child with special needs and gets into that. And I, I think this is finds a special place in my heart just learning about more about what, um, what his background is there and how that's changed him. Um, and hearing sort of what, what, what is this, you know, having something where, where I think he probably had a very successful career, everything was going his way, and then to have something like that happen to you where you weren't expecting it. Yeah, you can definitely feel for that and empathize with that. And I think it's it's neat how he brings in um, kind of life experiences that inform you in the work world that you don't have to separate that. That that does, um, you know, bring to light what's important to um, realize is there's diversity. And, you know, I think... That's one thing that is interesting in the story along the way that you know, he kind of, kind of comes into it in that engineering mentality, but he's mm -hmm. v vulnerable enough to let the challenges and the problems of life mm -hmm. um, inform him to, to grow versus create, I guess, bitterness or create um, rigidness um, that sometimes can be that reaction to the, the struggles in life. So that's, um, I, I've enjoyed kind of getting a sense of that. And I, I've, I kind of felt that from just the, the news and the, you know, the times that I've seen him talk, but you know, reading the book, I think shows more behind the scenes of kind of how real he is. This is, uh, you know, he says, don't get me wrong. I'm anything but perfect. And for sure not the, on the verge of it. Um, achieving enlightenment or nirvana. It's just that life's experiences have helped me to build a growing sense of empathy for an ever wide widening circle of people. I have empathy for people with disabilities. I have empathy for people trying to make a living in inner, inner cities in the Rust Belt to the developing countries of Asia, Africa, and, and Latin America. I have empathy for small business owners working to see, whoop, succeed. Whoop, whoop. Uh, I have empathy for any person targeted with violence and hate because of the color of his or her skin, what they believe or who they love. My passion is to put empathy at the center of everything I pursue, from the products we launch to the new markets we enter to the employees, customers, and partners we, we, we work with. That's great stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it, it doesn't seem like a per public service announcement. Mm -hmm. It seems like something he definitely believes in, and mm -hmm. and um, and is and in, been informed, I think, in his upbringing, mm -hmm. where he talks about his 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 mom and his and I don't know the exact words that were said, but basically enjoy life and do what you know brings joy mm -hmm. um, versus his father being a little bit more the logical side, mm -hmm. more the mechanical, you know, you know, do the job um, and perform. Um, I, I think he's, you know, he's naturally, it seems like he is that natural response is an engineer, but has been heavily influenced by his mom to bring more to it, to bring more of the empathetic kind of soft skills of, yep. of leadership yeah so he says next he's saying the book is about transformation one that is taking on place inside of me inside our company driven by a sense of empathy and a, a desire to empower others but most important it's about changing uh, about change coming in every life as we witness this uh, as we witness the most transformative wave of technology yet, one that will include our artificial intelligence, mixed reality, and quantum computing. It's about how people, organizations, and societies must transform, or, or as he would say it, hit refresh, in their persistent 
quest for new energy, new ideas, relevance, and renewal. At the core, it's about us humans and the unique quality we call empathy, which will become ever more valuable in the world where a torrent of technology will disrupt the status quo like never before. Yeah, what's interesting with Microsoft is that being able to have the courage go beyond what they have been comfortable with, which is, you know, kind of the package software, um, selling licenses of software that are kind of long-term use um, versus the subscription model in the cloud, which was not something they invented, um, that they were kind of being hit with, with their competition. Um, and they were able to embrace it in a, a way that spoke to what they care about. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, I kind of draw some equivalency there when I look at, all right, it's an ever-changing world for us. We see you know, people needing to get to the cloud, going from cloud to cloud. And in that kind of you know, point of life cycle, um, for organizations getting more out of their collaboration. Mm-hmm. And it's brought us into a lot of migrations, which is something that we always saw as, you know, someone else did. Yeah. Um, but I think we've brought our passion for crafting, you know, a good solution because there is a solution aspect of what you're doing when you do that migration mm-hmm. and um, a passion for pro- um, process of having good process and being adaptive to the situation that we like kind of taking chaos and creating predictability and and control and choice in those situations. And it's neat to see how we've taken something that we normally would say, oh, that would be terrible if we had to do that Mm -hmm. to something that there's a certain sense of pride of what we accomplish. And, you know, that is kind of what you have to do to survive as a company and to evolve as a company is to recognize where are where's need and where's your passion get connected with that need and i think microsoft has done that well and i think we're adapting to that well too and where are your unique gifts too because you mm-hmm. know our background being more an app dev i think has brought a lot of has has made us uniquely qualified to go do some of the stuff that we're doing yeah, right now yeah get, oh, the tool doesn't do it that's fine we'll just we write some powershell scripts or do something you know you know, right yeah, in some cases, I feel like we're more powerful than a tool that you can buy off the shelf, even if there was one. Uh-huh. Um, it's because we can adapt to the situation and we um, are able to make it purpose built for the situation. And, mm-hmm. the, you know, the whole three C's that we have is, you know, choice is part of those three C's. I think we give people more choice mm-hmm. versus saying, well, that's just what the tool does. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but you can't have it that way. Yeah. This is interesting because we're sort of getting into sort of how empathy, and I I think about this because we're um, thinking about what the experience is and trying to get into, um, for these organizations that we're doing these projects for, how does it feel on the, on the other side? to be the person who is, you know, I've moved from, we'll just use the, you know, we're helping a lot of people move from Jive to, to Office 365. What does it feel like to be on the receiving end of that and to think about what is, what are they, you know, how are we enabling them? How are they better off uh, today than they were yesterday? And I think a lot of, you know, trying to think of, of those things is important for us to do as an organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the empathy side. I mean, you're trying to put yourselves in their shoes versus technically saying, okay, we moved the content. Yeah. And you got, that's where we kind of started and Mm -hmm. and we're evolving to, you know, have a bigger impact in terms of the experience on the other end. Mm -hmm. So at this rate, we'll be done with this sometime tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, just on page 10 we're, yes we're on page 13 <laughs> okay <laughs> this is fine i mean, I mean the, the, um this may be good for us to take it chapter by chapter and that that this will give us some materials to go through we'll also have in the middle of this i think if we continue to go down this route um uh you know we'll have the partner conference well we'll i'll pick up some things from mm-hmm. there that i can share about what's what's coming with um 
from Microsoft. But uh, you know, the rest of the if I look at the book and you know the what what he does is he gives a I think he wants to you to know what his background is. And so he gets into his family life growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and I th my overall impression of reading this, and he had a lot of, you know, the, I think he had a, a, a number one is, is his parents, where his dad was, you know, he, he, he was in the, um, what did they call it? He was in the, the service, basically, um, the Indian Administration Service. And, you know, he was, there wasn't a test he couldn't take that he wouldn't, he could pass every test. Mm -hmm. And yet he didn't have those expectations on him. Like when, you know, when he didn't put uh, Sachi up to that same type of, um, and he was very, I think he was very empathetic with him growing up and probably recognized he had his own unique skills. Mm -hmm. and, and it was good to hear, you know, he didn't, he didn't start off wanting to be tech, you know, he wanted to be a professional cricket, uh, cr cricket player, <laughs> can you say the word cricket player. And, you know, the, um, you know, him falling in love with that and, you know, hearing, um, learning some about what his mom had to do with giving up some of her, giving up her career in order to raise the family. Mm -hmm. I think he just, he learned some. He learned a lot of things, just like you and I, from our parents about yeah. the choices that they made and what the impact of those choices could be on us and on others. Um, anything else as you read through uh, this? It was good to hear he had a um, Catholic school <laughs> experience, <laughs> like you and I. How long did you did you you went in uh, elementary school at St. Joseph? Yeah, kindergarten through eighth. Kindergarten yeah. through, oh, you yeah. went all the way through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, but and then it was interesting to read all these, you know, the people who went to these, some of these schools. Oh my goodness, you know, the probably the formative ed education they were given, and um, you know, I take that back. I don't, it might have been first or second grade that I started, but it went through okay. eighth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Dad'll let us know. Yeah, <laughs> or dad, like some homework for you, Dad. <laughs> yeah, done, Dad, you remember this? You'll have to ask Mom about that one. But it was listed, He was listing out the alumni of the school that he went to. Was one was the, you know, the CEO of Adobe, the CEO of Mastercard, all these different yeah, folks. Yeah, that, yeah, it's crazy. Um, that were a part of that school that that he had went to. Um, and then you know, it just sort of goes through and shares more about. Um, his background growing up and how he ended up over here in the States. And, um, you know, it wasn't, I think the thing that you wanted to take away from this is like, it sounds like, a, a, you know, the, the story of someone from India coming over into technology and doing well within the technology business might sound like a story everybody's heard before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think the thing that I learned from all of this was that, you know, he wasn't, um, he, you know, he he was more, and I think they have this like as a, as the intro of the book. He was more of a humanitarian than he was a technologist. Right, right. And so that that just that brings a different um, viewpoint of what their what he focuses in on um, as an organization, and really gets us into he's focused in on the culture, which we'll get into. Yeah, later on. yeah, yeah. I think it creates a certain amount of balance that naturally an organization that's a technology organization is going to have more of the logical you know side of things the kind of the the right brain side of things and, and he can bring the other side mm -hmm. to, to create balance in the environment mm -hmm. if i look at the rest of this is just covering sort of what led him over to microsoft and if you haven't read the book read the book it's, it just gives you the background on some of the people he worked with and how that ended up coming to play he was originally at Sun and then he came over to Microsoft and then worked on, you know, a couple of really important groups when, uh, you know, uh, Windows NT and some of the the different groups that he had been a part of. Um, and then I'll just sort of wrap it up with this as, as we're getting towards the to the end of this. Um, you know, he wraps up with the, the the whole story around getting his wife over how he had to, I guess, turn in his his green, green card, card, yeah, in order for her to come over to the states, mm -hmm. which just tells you that you know there's something wrong with 
uh, th- that's more of the r- r- wrong with the, the, the rules and regulations mm-hmm. of the system. But um, it was also a very unselfish thing to, for him to do. But um, yeah, so it sort of gives you. I think for us, you know, as I look at this, it just gives gives us a peek into his background, his um, his you know his family life with uh, his son Zane and what what how that's changed him. Um, a background on you know who who his parents were and and the risk that he had to take and uh, you know it, it gets me excited you know to 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 learn more about him and and um, how that background is, has made a change at at Microsoft. So the next one is the next chapter is learning to lead, and we'll just cover this the next time we get together. But this is you know sort of gets into his um, leading at Microsoft, and so we'll cover that at the next get go. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Next time we'll get together, we'll talk about chapter two. We'll just take this chapter by chapter. At least this gives us some stuff to talk about. <laughs> I think it's, you know, and we're, and we got sort of into this in the middle of this, but it's just sort of what does this mean to us as a, mm-hmm. as a small Microsoft partner, um, you know, and what is learning more about what he's doing at Microsoft. How does that impact us? Um, you know, most important culturally and, and then just sort of as a partner, how can we take some of the things he's doing and apply that to what we're doing here at Free Will? Yeah. Cool. All Thanks right. everybody for listening. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>